I am early. Good afternoon, folks. How you doing? I'm Sean. Sean in Alaska. It is awesome to see you guys. So we'll first go with why I'm early today. It's gorgeous outside. It's absolutely beautiful. And I've got a rack of ribs that I'm going to smoke later on this afternoon. So I thought, you know what? I got to go early today so that when I'm done, I'll have time to get everything done I want to do outside. It is phenomenally beautiful here in Alaska. For those new to the live chat, I am Sean. Sean in Alaska. Built myself an off-grid cabin after never building anything before in my life. So um, just like a first endeavor ever. Uh, the way I like to do these lives, I mean, I'm so behind right now. I don't even have my tea ready to drink. Um, the way I like to do these lives is I like to say hello to everybody. So um, I start at the top of my list and I work my way down. If you guys have a comment or a question, you leave it and I miss it. By all means, leave it again. If I've already answered it by the time I get there, I'll go ahead and just skip over it. Um, and sometimes it's good if you're going to leave it a second time to leave it in all caps. So that way it kind of jumps out on me. With that said, we'll jump back to the beginning here. It's been a crazy week, too, by the way. I had snow like three times this week in the last week. One day, about three inches. Yesterday morning, I woke up. I got another inch, but it was gone by noon. Uh, but, yeah, the weather is, I, I don't know. The, the weather in Alaska is just crazy. <laughs> Matt, welcome, brother. It is good to see you. John Feeney, welcome, my friend. It is good to have you here today. I also thought it'd be nice to go uh, early a little, or go live a little bit earlier because I do have viewers that like to join the lives from Ireland from the UK, from uh, overseas in Europe, um, and it makes it a little easier for them to watch as well. Um, it makes it easier than having to do two lives, uh, one for the folks that are not in the North American area and one for the folks that are uh, in North America. So, I, you know, who knows? We've only got a couple more of these left before the season's over, uh, and I'm going to be busy, busy working, and then I'll probably be done with the lives. I'm going to call a day. Let me pull my calendar up right now. I'm going to tell you when the last live is going to be. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let's call it May 5th will be my last live uh, for this season. I may do a pop-up live between now and then, uh, but we'll call it May 5th will be the last live on a regular basis on Sundays because uh, it's just going to be way too beautiful and we're going to have way too many people down here. For those that don't know, um, I get my internet here off of... Uh, my hotspot on my cell phone and because of where we're at as the tourists get heavier and heavier in the season here in Alaska um, the Wi-Fi network gets pretty well taxed and it gets almost impossible for me to go live but if I could do a pop-up in the summer maybe I will uh, let's get back to saying hello built on the rock homestead how are you doing today Jill welcome glad you can make it today Genova good to see you yeah it's early I know that's why you made it Joanna yes I am early today glad you uh, just happened to be on as well everything is fantastic everything is absolutely awesome Old School Alaska, what's happening? Awesome to see you today. Oh, Matt, just saw you passed eight subs. I did. I passed 8,000 subscribers this weekend. Super, super crazy. I, that's, that's a crazy feeling for me. Super crazy feeling. I was thinking about getting off of YouTube and going out to milk the goats when the snowification popped up. Maybe you'll forget. Okay, I hope to be a good excuse for you guys to stop what you're doing and relax for an hour and chit-chat. Mary, welcome. It is good to see you today. It is beautiful in Maryland. Awesome. It is gorgeous. I mean, there's not a cloud in the sky today. Um, which is crazy because it has not been that way this spring. Matt says it's gorgeous down in Utah as well. And you need to get outside. So when this live is over, everybody has to agree that they're going to join me and just go outside and enjoy the day. Sunshine, welcome. It is good to see you. It's gorgeous, right? Oh, my God. She lives in Kenai, so uh, kind of a neighbor. Um, so if I've got a gorgeous day, she's got a gorgeous day too. Jim, Wooly Rhino Adventures. I've been spending like a couple of hours yesterday and like four hours today cleaning out the inside of that fifth wheel, Jim, just so you know. <laughs> Anne O'Brien, how are you? Thank you very much. I'm very happy with how that turned out. You guys are going to get to see what the counter looks like after I get it oiled um, in next week's video. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, early stream works for me because mom likes to host dinner at the same time as she... Ah, nice, nice. Right, Cinco de Mayo, the 5th of May. Big Family Expedition, how are you doing today? It is awesome to see you. Oh, your birthday is May 5th, Jill. That is awesome. My birthday is May 17th. So, yeah, and, and I'm going to do it May 5th because on Friday, May 10th, uh, Susan, who was in here last week, her and I, in, in the intro where you see uh, me and the woman fishing and we've got a whole bunch, of, that's Susan. That's my fishing buddy. We just have a blast. And we always try to book at least one trip a year. And she got in touch with me and we're going to go um, razor clam digging on the other side of the inlet on the Friday, the 10th of May. So honestly, I wasn't going to be live on that weekend anyway. So that would have been the 12th. 
um yeah so yeah no uh no live stream but i'm gonna, I'm gonna she booked a trip for us and we're gonna go over and i think the limit is like on the boat is like 10 gallons per person so it's gonna be just a huge oh it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be fantastic i love razor clams the secret mr sean is to live about 1,000 feet from the cell tower <clears throat> yeah you know and that would be helpful too but we don't have that many cell towers out here in funny river yet they're still they're building more so it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens mark what's up buddy it is awesome to see you man mark and i work together in california he taught me the basics of fly fishing great great guy True Blue Aussie, Lisa W., how are you doing? First time catching a live at 6.03 in the morning, Monday in Melbourne, Australia. My cousin lives in Wollongong, New South Wales. So, yeah, I've got I've got family in, in Oz, uh, and it's super awesome that you can make it here today. Great to have you. Karen, how are you doing? It is good to see you today. I hope you like the picture, Karen, because so let's go about the picture. Let's let's discuss the picture of the thumb or the thumbnail that I used for today's live. This morning I woke up and I looked out the window and that tree that has been leaning over finally in one of the windstorms, it snapped, it broke, but it's still connected on the other end where it comes up out of the ground. And the chickens have decided that that is their morning roost now. And I thought that was the coolest picture. And I figured, Karen, you'd get a kick out of that. Southern Blessed Homestead, how are you guys doing? It is fantastic to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Brady G, how are you doing today? You sent me my weather, but it didn't get there, so no snow. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> my daughter. My two daughters live in California, and one lives up by Oroville, and the other one lives down by Yosemite National Park, where, you know, we were we all grew up, and they were, you know, they both went to school. Um, but it was funny because she sent a, a message to me the other day, me and her sister, and she saw it was 70 degrees here yesterday, and it was snowing the day that she sent that. Crazy. And says, weather here is crazy. We've had uh, for the best part of nine months this weekend. It's not too bad. A good bit of sunshine. Nice and very cool. And is in Ireland, for those that did not know. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate that. If you hit the thumbs up button or even the thumbs down button, it doesn't really make any difference. It just shows that, you know, people are interested in what we're doing here on the live stream or what I'm doing here on the live stream. And it will suggest it to other people. And it's great, great, great for the channel whenever anybody hits the thumbs up. Patty, how are you doing? So if this is Patty, then that must be Mac on the other one. Mac, you glorious bugger. <laughs> uh, Greg, how you doing, my friend? We had some crazy weather here in Ontario, Ontario the last couple of weeks four days of rain and hot yeah we've had a lot of wind this this spring has been very very windy oh your birthday is april 20th nice i don't know what the historic without looking it up i wouldn't know off the top of my head what the relevance is of april 20th let us know mary uh did you oil the underside of the countertop no but i'm going to do that this week i got the top one i did four coats on the top and i still have quite a bit of oil left um, but after reading a couple of other comments, I think I'll go ahead and I'll make sure I oil the bottom of, as well. I probably should have done that early, um, before I installed it, but it was much easier to do it afterwards. And it was nice. Just, oh, it was beautiful. Just beautiful. Brooke Trout, welcome. It is good to see you, my friend. Ward. <laughs> yes, the snow is melting massively now. I can see quite a bit of the driveway. And even with the fresh snow that I've had, like yesterday, we, we got like an inch more. Um, that was gone, and it melted out even more underneath. So uh, it, the snow can't win at this time of year because we have way too many hours of daylight. I should look that up because I didn't. Normally, I have the little track thing going down on the bottom, but I'll tell you right now what our sunrise and sunset's going to be. Uh, sunrise and sunset in 99669 zip code. Sunrise today is at 6.44 a.m. and sunset is at 9.24 p.m. So, yeah, long, long days, like 15 hours of a daylight. But actually, it's probably light. It's, it's getting light at 6 o'clock in the morning and it's still just a little bit light at 10 p.m. at night. So, yeah, the days are getting much, much longer. Uh, Scotty, you're outside. Nice, brother. Yeah, I'm going to be outside uh, barbecuing. A rack of ribs today. We had baby backs on sale for three bucks a pound up here on Friday. So I picked up one and I thought, man, it'd be fun to do some some ribs on the offset smoker, or as I like to call it, the side box smoker, so that Scotty can correct me. <laughs> Joanna says it's 83 in East Texas. You have tomatoes, green tomatoes on your plants already. Oh my God, that's crazy. I mean, I have seedlings that are coming up pretty good, but we're a month and a half away easy from even thinking about planting anything in the ground.
Uh, I drove from Seward to Anchorage on one day. Yeah, that was crazy, wasn't it? That was some wild snow. I mean, it just dumped. It was nuts. My checkers are coming. Five hatched yesterday. Hopefully a bunch more. Nice. Very cool. Why am I not outside? Well, because it's still a bit chilly, Ward. It's still like 38 degrees, 39 degrees here. So um, I'll make sure that my last live, if possible, will be outside because um, <clears throat> it would be kind of fun. But right now it's still too chilly. I'm not sitting around outside. I can, I can sit here and relax and have a nice cup of tea. Um, and today's variety of tea is oolong. Uh, like I said, somebody sent me a bag of mixed twining tea, and it's been awesome because I'm trying some stuff I've never had before. So that's why I'm not live outside, Ward. Oh, geez, Scotty, your, your snow's gone, and it's 72. Wow, that's crazy. I saw that, uh, Greg, and Greg's talking about the, the butcher block countertop that I did, and I didn't see that until actually after I'd installed it because we've never, I mean, I grew up in bakeries, and we never oiled the bottom of the of the counter, of, of the workbench, and the workbenches were always butcher block workbenches, you know, um, usually maple, uh, but we never oiled those, and I thought, well, it wouldn't hurt. Right. So, yeah, like I said, I got four really good coats of oil that penetrated very deeply into the wood, just soaked it right up. And I'll probably oil it again, the top again, one or two more times before I'm done. Uh, and then I'll just keep a regular system of maintenance on it while I'm oiling it, um, you know, a regular system to oil it up, maybe in the spring and maybe in the fall. Um, and that way it'll just keep absorbing into that wood. Oh, your birthday is April 29th. Awesome. Well, happy birthday, my friend. Very cool. I am early. <laughs> it's it's not three o'clock. You're fine, man. We it, it, we didn't hit a time zone. <laughs> Matt says we barely had any snow in the valleys here this winter, but the mountains got plastered. And you know, here's a crazy thing. So Anchorage has one of the third highest amounts of snowfall that they have received in in recorded snowfall uh, for Alaska this year. And it, it's like over 130 inches. And to me, that's amazing because we. We didn't have, I mean, hardly, let me close this other window up here. We didn't have hardly any, um, I mean, we had snow, but we didn't have that much brutal snow that Anchorage had. Anchorage just got slammed this year. Ward, have a great day, dude. I'm going back outside, too, in about an hour. Henry Leslie, Vermont. Awesome to see you, my friend. Glad you could make it today. Yeah, and our days are just going to keep getting longer. I think the longest day of the year for us, um, we might have like two hours of darkness of actual darkness and then the rest of it will either be sunrise or sunset um but only two hours of, of dark i woke up last night after i went to bed and uh i thought man i haven't been sleeping that long this is crazy and it was probably about 10 um and and it was still kind of light out and i thought what the heck is going on is the sun coming up no it was still going down Yeah, right. It's a good time of year. That's why I'm not a fan. I mean, we've discussed this before of daylight savings because the days get longer anyway. Brenda, welcome. How are you doing today? Two inches of rain yesterday from the Oakdale Rodeo Parade. That's crazy. I used to go to the dance for that every year. I, I looked forward to the Oakdale Rodeo dance every year. It was a ton of fun. Um, and that rodeo is an awesome rodeo. I grew up in the Sonora area. So, well, above Sonora in the mountains. Yeah, you can, Karen. I'll go ahead and I'll post it on the community tab, um, just the raw picture uh, without my writing and stuff in there. And you can you can definitely pull it off of there. By the way, if I have pictures that you guys really like that I share on the community tab, and that's why it's always good to be subscribed so you can see that kind of stuff. I don't have any problem with you grabbing that picture for yourself. Um, the only time I would have an issue is if you're going to use it for commercial purposes, meaning you're going to sell the picture um, at, at that point kick a little my way <laughs> but still feel feel free to take it i don't have any problem with that trail camp pete how you doing my friend it is awesome to see you today i enjoy oolong tea too and i it's like the first time i think i've ever had it where it was just like straight usually i drink black tea um and orange cut pico tea i think i i forget what they call them but you know usually i drink my, my tea of choice has always been irish breakfast tea i really enjoy that um but this sampler mix has been kind of fun. 
I'm just scrolling through when I'm not really saying anything on the side here to see if I've said hello to everybody. Henry Leslie, Vermont's got 48 degrees and rain in there. Oolong is best as a loose, loose leaf tea. If I get down that way, I'll... Oh, nice, awesome. I've never really done loose leaf tea. I've always done bags. Davis, how are you doing today? I recently started to watch you. Very impressive build. I'm wondering, will your life there be by yourself? Or you... I, I'm by myself. I'm divorced. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a wife or a significant other. Um, I have chickens. <laughs> Thinking about getting a dog. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just me, man. But welcome. Awesome that you've, uh, awesome that you joined me. This has been super cool. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, and I like to share the fact that I don't know what I'm doing with all the mistakes that I make when I do them. <laughs> If I could do this, anybody can. I, I'm, I kid you not. If you have a uh, if you have a willingness to to learn and you're not afraid to try, um, those are the two keys I think in life to have an absolutely wonderful, successful life. A willingness to learn and not afraid to try. Those two things will get you so far. It's crazy. Robert, who's further north than me and has the little boo wrench, and by all means, Robert, Scotty, share your channels. And, and anybody else that you see in here that's got a channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, he's at 14 hours and 51 minutes of daylight uh, where he's at, which is, it's crazy. It's crazy how long the days get. Scotty won his first barbecue contest at the Oakdale Rodeo in 1984. Very cool, Scotty. Lipstick, Lodge, Linda, how are you doing today on a chat? Had a problem getting on again? That's crazy. Well, welcome. Glad you can make it. Scrappy Cat, how are you? Above Sonora, I probably where I plan to retire in the future. Hope you got a lot of money because that property is a lot more expensive now than it was when I was growing up. It's crazy how expensive it is up there. Twain Hart, oh, good luck. It's nuts. Cuz, what's happening, Greg? Can't hang out, just popping in to say hi. Everything looks like it's coming in. Thank you very much, Greg. Greatly, uh, greatly appreciate that. It is. Um, every day is just one day better. Man, I love it. I love it. That's my cousin, Greg. Sandra, how are you doing today from Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia? Well, this is kind of nice. I get on early and we get some folks from Australia. I think that's very awesome. I bet it is. I bet it is. You know, it's it's amazing. Um, I, and this is not on the subject of tea, as I'm going through this, this fifth wheel trailer and cleaning everything out. So I have the whole pantry area just about completely cleaned out. I have the whole kitchen and living room area cleaned out and I have left to do the bedroom, which is going to be the, the worst part. But it's amazing the stuff that I had in that trailer. Um, when I, I'll, I'll get a picture of it and I'll show it to you um, in next week's video. Uh, it, I'm not recording me in there cleaning the trailer. I, I, it's, I, I took a before picture and I'll do a before and after picture when I'm done. Um, but I can't believe I had that much garbage in there, that much junk. Uh, it just amazes me. Um, and it was when you brought the whole loose leaf tea and I just thought of everything I had in there. 41 degrees near Algonquin Park in Canada. Awesome. Scotty, you're going to retire in Oklahoma? I thought you were going to retire in Alaska, man, and we'd grill together. <laughs> this is inspiring. I've been watching a lot of house builds for many months now and got more and more convinced. You can do it, man. You can do it. I, I honestly believe that anybody can do it. Um, you just have to you have to have the willingness to learn and the willingness to try. You know, you got the ability to learn and the willingness to try, you are there. I bought a blue staffy puppy. I'll post her. Oh, nice. Definitely. Oh, very cool. So I, my biggest issue with dogs is I'm kind of particular on what I'm looking for. Um, I want an Australian Shepherd or a border, border Collie. Border Collie would probably be the first one that I want. Um, you know, the top of the list and, or an Australian Shepherd would be the second one because I just love them. They're smart. They're friendly. Um, they're they're just super cool dogs. My big problem is that people think that they're made of gold and they want an ungodly amount of money for them. And I will not pay that amount of money for a dog. Art, what's happening, brother? You're driving for the next couple of hours. But listen, very cool. Very cool. Uh, Sonora, Texas, isn't that a, yeah, right, Sonora, Texas. <laughs> My grandfather, oh, this is Miri to Lipstick Lodge. Jane, how are you doing today? Glad you can make it from the UP, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. It's 54 and sunny this afternoon. I'll check the temperature now and let you guys know what it is here. So I got 39 degrees, but it is glorious sunshine out there. So I, I, 
you know, upstairs in the loft right now it's 73, and downstairs here on the main floor it's 65 degrees. I've been turning the heater off every day, so that heater's probably going to go off here. As soon as we're done with the live, I'll probably turn it off for the rest of the afternoon. All right, Scotty, if you guys have not checked him out, check out Scotty's channel. Uh, Curmudgeon shared it up here for you. Uh, Scotty's Backyard Barbecue, the man can cook, and he makes it super simple for anybody to be excellent on the grill. Uh, so check out Scotty. He just built himself a little like a little shed in his backyard for grilling. Uh, and he'll be out there all summer long, I'm sure. 80 degrees in northwest Arkansas. Man, I couldn't imagine what 80 degrees would feel like right now. It's been so long. I mean, my, our low temperature this year, I think we were like at minus 27. I might have hit close to minus 30 one morning on the drive-in. So when you when you think that that would be our cold, and our high will probably be 80 to 85 maybe at the most during the summer you know for our highest temperature day of the year i mean we could get warmer we have gotten warmer but that's just a ballpark figure of what we might get to this year you're looking at you know what is that that's 110 115 degree swing from coldest to warmest i mean that would be like if your coldest temperature gets to 30 and then your high temperature would be 145 degrees that would yeah that's crazy that's crazy yeah i'm sure it feels hot man Definitely sure it feels hot. Show me of a combo of Aussie Shepherd Border Collie, smartest dog, got it from a shelter. Nice. Yes, very cool. They do need a lot of exercise, but I have property where they can run around on. So I'm not I'm not worried about that. And I spend most of my time in the summer outside, right? I'm rarely inside. Um, and then I spend, you know, if I've got a dog, if I've got somebody to go do something with, and I would consider a dog somebody to go do something with, I'd be outside a lot more in the, in the winter. I really would. Look for the oops puppies. Those are the ones that are half purebred mix. I don't have a problem with that either. Uh, but what's crazy is up here, even those dogs are hundreds of dollars. It's nuts. Brook Trout says it's currently, uh, where are we at here? I hope I missed that. Oh, no. It was built on the rock that said it was 82 degrees there. That's nuts, man. That's nuts. Matt, I did too. Mid-90s in Fairbanks, the second summer I worked there. So hot. And then humid too thunder because most people don't realize that that whole area around Fair, fairbanks that tundra is actually swampy um so you get heavy heavy humidity in the afternoons when you have real high temperatures there uh, and then the thunderstorms roll in which is pretty awesome as well 81 in northwest mississippi awesome patty thank you for that Alaskan Survivalist, how you doing today? I'm here in Kenai. I'm really impressed with what you're doing, especially being able to build and run a YouTube channel and everything. It's That's the hardest thing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I um, I build, I record, I do all the editing, um, I work full time, and I still manage to get out and enjoy myself a little bit too. It, uh, it gets to be a handful. Um, I kind of appreciate the winters because things slow down a great deal and I can I can relax a, a great deal more. Um, and that's a, a big reason why I haven't gone to two videos a week is if I do two videos a week, then I have to edit two videos a week. And to edit one video takes me, you know, one 30-minute video usually takes me about two and a half hours to edit. Um, I always usually have enough footage, so that's that's not the issue. Um, it's just trying to get it right, you know, so it's something that you might want to watch. But, yeah, it can, it can be a bit challenging. I'll tell you what, it's not... Uh, not what I expected it to be. I expected it to be a whole lot easier than this. It's my dream to one day have my own off-grid homestead. I'd love to come and volunteer a few hours of the day to help you out anything you use second pair of hands with. I greatly appreciate that. I'm pretty much a solo person. I uh, I generally don't I generally don't have anybody over at my house, and that and and that's not that's even like friends don't even come by that much because you know if they want to get together and do something, I go visit them, but. I'm a pretty solo person. Well, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, if I do get into a project that requires many hands, though, remember, you volunteered. <laughs> 48 Fahrenheit, 8 Celsius in Latvia. Very cool, my friend. Very cool. I have a neighbor who sells border collies. Very expensive, but his are well-trained and grew up with sheep. I, and, and that's why I'm looking at border collies or Aussies is because I eventually plan on having some kind of livestock here. Um, that's my thought. Um, I have the chickens already, so I want an animal that I, I don't have to worry about, A, on the livestock, and B, that's a longer-haired animal so that the winters won't be as, as brutal on them. A short hair just won't, you know, I, would be having a lot of issues. Um, 
with the cold, cold temperatures. Uh, here, here in Texas, the border call puppy starts at 15K. That's nuts. Wow. That is crazy. Okay, so maybe Alaska's pricing is not as bad as I thought it was. That is nuts. <laughs> right? You're making a lot of people want to. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> Kevin Wright in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, 75 degrees outside. Beautiful. Nice, my friend. Very cool. Or somebody wants interactive exercise, running, frisbee, hiding. Yeah, exactly. But it's fun, right? I, I, so, you know, I've made no secret of the channels that I watch. And, I, and one of the channels that I watch on a regular basis, watched him this morning, was uh, My Self Reliance. And he's got his dog, Callie. And, I mean, you could be doing a million things and just reach down and grab the toy and throw it. And that dog will sit there all day long because that's what they love to do. And, you know, dogs are awesome. They are fantastic. Michigan Daffodil, how are you doing? It is great to see you. Mostly listening as I look online for new to us. W, uh, WW discovered a beautiful 2007 Verado. Oh, bummer. Yeah, that happens. That's a bummer. <laughs> All border collies are nuts. I think they are. Okay. Oh, shoot. We went from 15k to 1500. It's still expensive, but that's about what they're asking up here in Alaska for. That to me is, I'm never going to spend that much on a dog. I, 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 you, I can't. You cannot justify that price for an animal to me. I'm sorry. You know, what I, mean? I could buy a freaking cow, raise the cow, and have beef for two or three years in a freezer um, for less than that. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah, see, I, and it's different priorities for different people. Some folks are willing to pay it, obviously, because if they weren't, then they wouldn't be asking that kind of price for it. But not me. <laughs> not me. <clears throat> I'll never forget the last dog I had in Alaska. Um, this this gal was, you know, used to come into the bakery that I was managing in Fairbanks and, and talk me into getting a puppy. And then, then when I gave her the pup, or when she gave me the puppy, she wanted money for it. And I was a little miffed, but I, I love the puppy immediately. His name was Fred. Um, I named him Fred. Uh, and, and I ended up paying like 40 bucks for him, and I felt ripped off for $40. <laughs> Patty, heading outside, take pics of the pretty flowers that are blooming. Great to see you as well, my friend. It is awesome, awesome to see you. Post the pictures. I'd love to see them. I, I'm missing flowers. This time of year, I'm missing the green, and I'm missing the flowers. Yeah, right. I could do a lot for fifteen hundred dollars that I don't have to feed. <laughs> Ginger, welcome. Glad you can make it today from warm northern Indiana. Nice. I think everybody's in the warm right now. That, that's super cool. Goldens are beautiful dogs. Goldens are beautiful dogs. That's what Callie is on on my self reliance. She's a golden retriever, and she's just they're just gorgeous animals. Let me know if you get another one, because I kind of set this up today for 30-minute intervals. So there should only be, other than the one you get probably when you come in, there should only be one commercial for anybody. So if you get more than one, let me know. Well, would you do the dirty work of butchering a cow? No, I'd do it. Yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with it at all. I haven't done it, but I've skinned a deer. I mean, I've done deer before, so you know, it's just a bigger animal. Uh, but I wouldn't have any problem doing it myself. I wouldn't pay somebody. It would just, to me, um, you know, when you buy a side of beef um, and you're paying for that side of beef, you're paying for the butcher to process that beef as well. Um, and, and to me, the, the price becomes exorbitant at that point. It's still probably cheap. I know it is cheaper than buying it at the grocery store uh, and it's better beef. You know, don't get me wrong. It is. But to me, if I'm going to raise an animal that I'm going to use for meat, that I'm going to harvest myself for meat down the road, I'm going to do the whole process from beginning to end. Joseph, welcome, my friend. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate that. You know, Great Pyrenees, they're gorgeous. So there's a lot of livestock guardian dogs up here. They call them LGDs. Um, and there's a couple of websites I'm on for that too. But man, they eat a lot. Oh my God, they eat a lot. Joe, what's happening, my friend? All of your dogs have been rescued? Very cool. That's mostly every dog I think I've ever had growing up was somebody else's dog first that we just took. Um, and the reason why I'm so fascinated by border collies is my brother, my youngest brother had one. And when he got divorced, he and his daughter moved in with me in California, and he had that border collie. And that border collie and I just bonded instantly. And I, dogs and children love me. 
grown women, not so much. <laughs> Dogs and children love me, though. Um, and when he got ready to move, I told him, you, you can't take the dog. And he goes, what do you mean I can't take the dog? And he called the dog, and the dog looked at him, the dog looked at me, and the dog sat down. And my brother goes, you took my dog, bro. I go, I'm sorry. But, yeah, um, his name was Spike. was a wonderful animal. And that's kind of why the border collar um, fascination with me, because I bonded so well with that dog. It was crazy. Joseph past the Brussels sprouts. Okay, Genova, you got a commercial as well? Anybody who gets two, let me know. I'm just kind of curious. I, I, I think I'm pretty lucky with setting it up for just one, for the 30-minute interval. So then the, in theory, everybody should just get one. Thank you very much for that, Robert. The thumbs up does help. I greatly appreciate it whenever I get one. I bought my first crock pot yesterday. I feel like a real adult now. Nice, but if you ever go off grid, you're never going to be able to use that thing, my friend. They use way too many watts. I said that too, but we paid a thousand for a golden doodle. They're going for three thousand to forty five hundred. Very happy you got it. Yeah, and see what I mean? It's 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 very much a personal decision. If if you're willing to to go there, if you really want the dog, my brother had a I forget what it was called. That dog was no bigger than this, but he paid good money for that dog, and he loved that dog. I mean, it was to him. He he didn't bat an eye. I do not even know what a Leonberger is, so now I'm going to have to go look it up. Robert, thanks for that. <laughs> <coughs> I agree, same concept, just a bigger animal around here. You may not even get the same meat back, right? Yeah, wait, we don't have that problem up here. Um, there's some local ranchers up here that you can buy from. The, 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 the issue is that I think we only have in the entire state, if we still even have it, one USDA certified butcher shop um and i if we still have it it's up by palmer or wasilla uh so it's it's difficult to buy meat from a private person up here to me those laws are just insane um they could put in some regular regulations i think that would make it a lot easier to do that uh but yeah it's uh it's something i would like to get into down the road i'd like to raise my I'd, I'd like to eventually maybe have a hog here you know a couple of pigs uh then i can get ham bacon sausage pork chops because i'm a big fan of pork um i've got the chickens uh that are laying the eggs but they're dual purpose birds and they're laying like mad um but i don't know honestly that i would eat them because there's not a whole lot of meat on them but then if you look at raisin meat birds um there's a whole other aspect to that as well i don't know um i just it should be easier to buy food. <laughs> That's coming from a guy who makes his living in a grocery store. Oh, okay. Great Pyrenees do not eat as much as larger do other large dogs. Their metabolism flow. Very cool. 81 in East Central Indiana at Joe's Place. Very cool, man. Built on the Rock Hat commercial. Okay, thank you for that. Sandra has no commercial so far. Hopefully it stays that way for you. I don't know if everybody gets one or not. <laughs> they are big why did i automatically think that they were when i saw the name when i saw the leo to begin with on the beginning of the name will i have a garden uh yes as a matter of fact i don't know if the camera's gonna give this any justice let's see if i can do this here so over there are the first seedlings get over there and then there are more seedlings in that one and then these two containers right here also have seedlings and I'm getting started. So my plan this year is to have a pretty good sized garden or get it started anyway. I'll be growing potatoes as well. The two containers I have against the windowsill, I just planted, that'll be in this next week's video too. Those are onions, red onions and yellow onions. Then I have um, uh, zucchini, leeks, uh, a couple of different herbs and um, some acorn squash in the other container by the window. Um, I didn't get any grow lights this year because I'm really not set up for that yet. And then in the small square one, I have pumpkins. So my 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 plan is that basically I'm gonna I'm gonna start the garden this year, and it's a multi-year project for me. Gardens are always multi-year projects. So I'll have all of those plus potatoes and maybe two or three other things. We'll see what happens. But um, in the area of the garden that I'm not using, I'm just gonna make a big old pumpkin patch. Um, and I've got. Two varieties of pumpkins there. I think I have a regular jack-o'-lantern style pumpkin, and then I have the sugar baby pumpkins. So for pumpkin pie and that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I have some success with that. We'll see what happens. I think it would just kind of be fun to have pumpkins growing out there. If I don't eat them all, I'll just throw them into the woods and the animals will eat them. 
So, you know, that's that's not a big deal for me. But yeah, garden this year. It is. Off-grid crock pot is called the Dutch oven or just any kind of skillet, you know, that you put over the fire. Uh, just keep it far enough away from the heat so it doesn't burn what's on the bottom and you get the same effect. Let it go all day long. I, I, I'm with you on that. Um, there would be a lot of different meals that I was eating right now if, in fact, I had uh, power. Uh, but I don't miss it um, at all, at all. And to go to Acres, my dog is a rescue, 70-pound mutt, but a sweet dog. Good guard dog, best dog I ever had, because she digs in the garbage. Yeah, you know, that's a natural thing for dogs. That's, I mean, can you see how bright it is right now? Holy smokes, that sun's coming right through the window. Uh, yeah, um, that's another thing with me, but we won't get into that. Um, vets are, man, it's expensive. Man, it's expensive. It's like going to a dentist. It's crazy. I was slated to get a pit bull fell through really wanted a staffy anyway uh they are smaller still chunky but shorter than the pitties yep uh so the american pit bull uh, the pit bull is an american staffordshire bull, bull terrier i think uh but it's a variation of the staffordshire uh, and they're wonderful dogs they are so family friendly if you spend the time with them to make them that way you can make i i firmly believe you can make any animal mean if you if you treat it wrong um but I've never run across somebody who's treated an animal properly where that animal has been bad. So, Greg, you got one? Okay, cool. <clears throat> My 50-pound blackmouth cur mix eats as much or more than your 85-pound or 100-pound. Wow, that's crazy. I Fruit trees are going to be tough. Um, I kind of would like to get some fruit trees locally, but I'll, I, I, there's a, a local place up here that grows them. Uh, but I need to find out what kind of success people have with them before I, I spend a lot of time in that. Berries, on the other hand, I would love to have a nice big berry patch. And I'll probably plant some raspberries this year um, where I'll have a continuous patch of raspberries to pick from. I like raspberries, blackberries. Blueberries are kind of a waste of time because I can go out and harvest those in the wild myself without having to pay anything for them or have to maintain them. I can just go out in the woods and get them. Um, and there's a big variety of berries up here that I can do that with. But fruit trees would be nice. I'd like to have some fruit trees. We were in trouble with our seedlings. They sprouted fast, and we had more. So go to try the greenhouse setup with a diesel heater. Yeah, right? That's crazy. That's a lot of plants, man. 216 plants is nuts. I recently received a little terrier mutt. She's earning her keep, getting rid of rats and rabbits. Nice. Kay, welcome. How are you doing? Todd, what's up? <coughs> Kay is Todd's mom, and Todd's there. Todd drove down to uh, the lower 48 to make his yearly trip down and pick up some stuff and, and see some family and friends. And keep an eye on your place, Todd. No problems at all. Will has moved in, though, um, because he, Barb got mad at him. So brother Will moved in, uh, and he's been running around your house naked. I just thought I should tell you. <laughs> Dutch oven is different from crock pots. Both are pots with lids and consumer food. I bought a crock pot back in the 60s, very popular in student-married housing. Crock pots are awesome. Do not get me wrong. Crock-Pots are absolutely awesome. But unfortunately, with the power that they draw, they are never something I will have here again. Or in the future. There you go. Crock-Pot or Dutch oven chili, cornbread, and a beer. Chili and cornbread, man. Yum, yum. What a combination that is. Sun ovens, um, I've looked at those a couple of different times. I, I'm not sold on that for Alaska even though we have a great deal of sunshine because it's still too cool outside i don't know how it would heat properly um and i i they i i don't care for the way that they're you know the way that you load them um i don't know it to me it's just it, there's too many other ways that i could cook right yeah here's another comment i don't know that they would work up here i don't you know it might be good to try one one time and see if they actually did any good jolie welcome good to see you it, you know, I don't know what's going on with the cough at this point. It's just a nagging, persistent, hanging on, um, silly thing. But there's nothing really coming up that much. So I can't, I mean, I cough a little bit in the morning, cough a little bit in the afternoon. Probably doesn't help. I have a candle smoldering over here. We'll go ahead and we'll turn that off. Um, I don't know. Carol L., how are you doing today? Great to see you. 
CK says, is there really an issue with the salmon population in Alaska? Saw a news report from Alaska about that. Not that I'm aware of. I, I mean, we have a uh, we have a big downturn on the king salmon, the Kenai River king salmon population. But I don't know, and they don't know if that's cyclical or what. But the sockeye population is up too. So I think a lot of this stuff is just cyclical. And as the you know, as as the river changes. You know, the river, what's the word I'm looking for? Ecology. As the river ecology changes, then the fish that live in that river and make that river their home will change as well. Um, so I, not, I, trust me, the, the picture of me laying on the grass with all those salmon was about two hours worth of work. Um, that was Susan was actually down for that one too. And, you know, there was no, no shortage of salmon that day. Oh, okay. Robert says solar ovens. Where are we at here? Robert says solar ovens will work fine here. They have many different kinds. I'll have to check them out. I'll have to, I'll have to look more in them. I do fish. I'm not fishing right now. It's way too early. I mean, I, you know, I could, the, the ice on the lakes is kind of getting thin now, so it's not really an ice fishing time. Um, and the rivers are just breaking up. And so I, there's really not nothing I can really go fishing for at this point. Not, not anything I'm interested in anyway. I like salmon. I love trout and I love halibut. Uh, but to catch halibut or salmon this time of year, you'd have to do winter Kings. Uh, usually I go out of Homer for that. Um, and then it's cause there's really, there's no salmon in the river at all right now to do trout. I would have to get to the lakes, uh, because basically trout will stay in the lakes until the spawn happens. And then they're feeding on the rivers as that, as the salmon are coming up, they're eating the eggs. We do have a lot of bycatch up here. We do have a lot of bycatch up here. <clears throat> Going off of CK, when does fishing start for me? Uh, the sockeyes usually hit the Kenai River about the second week of July. Um, and that run lasts through maybe the first week of August, at which point the silvers are in the river. Um, we have a run of spring kings and a run of fall kings as well. Uh, so um, for the last few years, there's been all kinds of restrictions on those, which I mean, in, in my opinion, they, I mean, they've done like catch and release, but in my opinion, they should just ban, flat out ban king salmon fishing on the Kenai River for the next five years. And let's see what happens, because um, it, it, it I'm not a firm believer that catching that and, you know, catching that fish, even if you're not removing it from the water and then releasing it is going to allow that fish to survive. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't like to get into arguments about that. Everybody has their own thoughts on it. Uh, but if, if we're going to spend every year waiting until the last minute before we decide that you can't catch that fish or take that fish out of the river, then maybe we just need to set a policy in place to say nothing for the next five years and then revisit the population. They did, when I first got here, the first year I got here, razor clams were a big deal from basically Homer all the way up to Anchor Point, uh, Nanilchik. And, uh, you know, people would go clam gulch and people would go out and get their clams on a regular basis. And, and they over, you don't really fish, but we'll say they over harvested the, the clam beds. They wiped them out. Um, and part of that was because they didn't have a decent limit in place. And part of that was that the limit was per, per person. Um, and big families were coming out with, you know, 10 kids and, and each one was allowed 60 and they're taking 600 clams a day. Uh, so, they shut down all clamming on this side of the inlet and uh, the Cook Inlet. So then people started getting in boats, which cost a lot more money. So a lot less people going to the other side of the inlet, which I'm planning on doing and harvesting over there. Now, there's no limit over there, but the fishing crews, the fish, the people that take you over there can set a limit for their boat, which they do, which I think is awesome. Um, so they, they banned all of the razor clam harvesting on those beaches and last year they opened it up for a couple of days that population is coming back so i think you know when you manage a a, a fish ecology or you manage um uh any kind of wildlife ecology properly you make it possible for people to actually use that as well um you know duck hunting deer hunting bear hunting 
moose hunting. Um, and I don't have a problem with any of that. I'm not really a trophy guy. I would never shoot anything unless I was going to eat it myself. But a lot of times the management of that resource will benefit not only the people, but the resource. Um, and if you're against that kind of stuff, I don't know what to tell you. I live in Alaska and a lot of people fill their freezers with that and keep themselves alive all winter long. So um, I, I just think that, you know, with proper management of, of, of a resource like that, they can make it go a lot further. <clears throat> uh, for cough, try three tablespoons of raw honey, one table, one teaspoon of cinnamon once a day for three days. Cough will be gone. I'll give that a try. I think I might have some honey here. If not, I need to get some for sure. But yeah, I might give that a try. CK wants to know, do I have any fishing trips planned for this summer? Other than just fishing on the river, no. Um, but I am planning on going to harvest razor clams uh, on May 10th. So I'll be going to the other side of the inlet to get a bunch of razor clams, hopefully, knock on wood. Um, and then uh, I'll obviously be eating fresh clams for a couple of days, but then I'll also uh, freeze up a bunch, and then it'll be chowders and soups all winter long. JD, what's up, brother? Good to see you, my friend. It's awesome to have you here today. <clears throat> CK loves king salmon and halibut. I love halibut. I'm a bigger fan of, of sockeye than I am king. Um, I like the consistency of the meat and the color of the meat. More eye appeal to me, but, uh, you know, we have king, sockeye, silver, and then we have, uh, what's the fourth one? that nobody ever eats. I call them dog salmon because they'll catch them and they'll freeze them and then they'll feed them to dog teams during the winter. Um, pink, pink salmon. I'm not a fan of that one at all. Meat's way too soft on it. Be charming. How are you doing today? And then there is the Asian commercial fishing that happens before they get to the rivers. Yes and no. So again, I, I could just tell you that I've been here since 2013 and the number of sockeye salmon that hit this river other than a couple of years where they've been down, have been very good. Um, there's been a couple of years where it's been just ridiculous. It's been off the hook. And and I, I don't know enough about how those fish migrate uh, because they do, right? They, they start in the river, they go out to sea, they spend some time out at sea, and then they come back into the river. I don't know where they go, how they get there, what they do, or which way they come back uh, to be able to say one thing or another. Does, you know, the offshore fleet hurt it? In, yeah, it, it definitely does. In some areas, uh, they'll stop the offshore fishing in some areas of Alaska so that fish can get into the river. Because if they just let the offshore fleet do it, you know, and, and let, them, let them net as many as they could then, they wouldn't have anything in the river to spawn to come back out the next year. Um, so we have an escapement level for all these fish, uh, which is, again, part of the management of the of the ecosystem for fishing. And, and each river has its own escapement plan that they want to see before they open up the floodgates and increase the limits, that kind of stuff. KT, how are you doing? Moving to Palmer later this year, mid forties with teenage boys will be, uh, we will be having remote jobs 20 years in the States, but with, oh, I'm missing what you got there at the end of it, but you'll love Palmer. Palmer's beautiful, a little windy, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous place. Pinks do not freeze well. Best to smoke them and can them. Exactly. So the, usually uh, the salmon that you see in the can at the store is generally pink salmon. Uh, and it, it kind of says it right on there. I don't, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen canned king salmon in the store. Um, and it's great for salmon dip and stuff like that, but it does not freeze well. And it's soft when it hits the river. Craig Porter, how are you doing today? It is awesome to see you. Good afternoon, Sean. Can you pass on the names of the clamming charters? Um, pull up my phone here because Susan sent this to me. need my bionic eyes uh, the one she booked us with is called gotta fish charters uh, and it's nanilchik clam charters cook inlet clamming poly creek razor clams so gotta fish dash charters dot com and then from there they'll have clamming trips on one of those so they're probably in you know a, a salmon and halibut char charter as well and this is what they do in the off season um, but the tides are a big deal. So um, the way that they do it, uh, the way that you do a charter for, for razor clams is they take you, it, it's got to be a big negative tide. They take you to the other side of the inlet as the tide is going out. And you sit on the boat until the boat is sunk in the sand, you know, in the, in the ground, because uh, the tide is completely out. So the boat is high and dry. 
Um, at which point everybody gets off and then they provide all the tools that you need to go clamming. Um, and when the tide starts to come back in, everybody gets back on the boat. And then once the boat floats free, you come back. So uh, the trip lasts anywhere from six to eight hours. Uh, and the day that we're going, the 10th of May, is supposed to be a really big negative tide, which will be awesome. Right. Yeah, I'm a big sockeye fan. I like sockeye grilled. I like sockeye smoked. I, it just it's a very versatile salmon. Have I driven the Dalton Highway since I moved to Alaska? I have not. Not since I've been up here, but I have driven the Dalton Highway before. Have I considered having beehives? I'm scared to death of being stung by bees. I'm not allergic to them, but they just, you know, whenever something's buzzing around by me, I freak out. Uh, there are people up here that do it, but that is not my thing. I'm not, I'm not into to beekeeping at all. Um, not even have, I don't even have any interest. I, I had, I have interest in honey from a hive but I don't want to do everything that it takes to get the honey from the hive and be, you know, raising bees in Alaska can be a challenge. And if you don't think so, um, like I said before about, you know, I, one of the other channels I watch is simple living Alaska and Eric and Ariel, um, Ariel has been trying to raise bees and get honey from bees since their second or third year up here. And I don't think she's had a su successful year yet. And those two pretty much succeed at everything they do. So, It'll be interesting now where they're at in Fairbanks. I don't know how much luck they're going to have there. And they're using a Russian strain of bee, which is, you know, supposedly into that whole climate. I know, I, I think it's a very difficult thing up here. <laughs> right, Be Charming? Windy's an understatement. Palmer gets a bit breezy. Thinking about your chickens, did you start giving them water? I did. Um, I finally had to. They yelled at me one day. It was funny because, um, and it's, it's been kind of a pain because it's still chilly in the mornings. This morning was 23 when I got up. So I went out and grabbed the water jug, brought it into the house, banged all the ice out of it, topped it back up with water again. But yeah, uh, now I'm giving them water because there's not enough snow for me. To eat. The, the, this was the easiest winter I've ever had with chickens in my life. And, and every year gets easier because I learn more. I've never had them before I moved to Alaska and before I moved on this property. But they, they let me know whatever they need. You know, I come home from work, they yell at me. And if they're all yelling at me too long while I'm sitting in the truck, finishing up the chapter of the audio book I'm on, um, I go, okay, I must need to check their food. You know, I check it every day, but they, they obviously ran out and they're, they, they act like they're starving to death. They're like kids. Uh, and then if they need anything, you know, if I give them food or their food's full and they're yelling at me, then I need to check their water. Um, I check it every day, but yeah, they're giving them water now and everything's fine with them. <clears throat> I think that's that's the big key right there. You know, it's the overwinter in Alaska for bees that's the most difficult. CK, I, I, that's one of the things I'm thinking about doing down the road here is meat chickens. Um, but I need to get myself more organized before I get into something else. Before I get into anything else other than the current chickens that I have, I need to get myself more organized on the property Um I need to be set up for it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do what I did with the chickens and get them and raise them on the table of of my house until I got the chicken coop built, which took me too long to build. I, I want to have everything in place, and then the next season I'll say, okay, it's time to pull the trigger on that. I I, I think too many times, um, and I know I'm guilty of this, so I'll, I'll speak from my own perspective. I think too many times I try to do something without being properly ready to do that thing, uh, and and. I mean, it goes all the way to when I first moved this trailer onto this property I, and I spent the first winter on here with no electricity, with no plumbing, with no water. I was not ready for that first winter. There were some days that, that, that I got up and I thought, man, this is the biggest mistake I've ever made in my life. <laughs> so um, for me personally, I am rethinking how I do everything to make sure that I am ready to do the next project before in fact I do the next project because there's nothing more frustrating than having a plan getting halfway there and having to stop because I don't know what I'm doing uh, so I'm trying to work ahead of that and I think a lot of people have that problem too uh, your kitchen's coming along nicely what's my next project so this this week is it's probably gonna be boring for most people <laughs> um, finishing off the kitchen counter uh, the one that the, the one that I installed I'm doing some planting uh, I'm doing some transplanting, um, cleaning out the trailer. I'm working on the property. It's a spring cleaning situation until the ground is completely dry. And then the big projects will happen. I have 
I got to be a week or two away from the from the from the big ticket item that I ordered arriving in Alaska. Um, and so when that arrives, that will happen right away. Um, and that's going to be a game changer for me. Uh, so I don't want to say any more than that. But yeah, I've got a couple of things coming down the road that are going to be pretty, pretty big. Uh, what is one thing you still want to visit but didn't have a chance since you moved? I want to see more of Alaska. I just, I always want to see more of Alaska. Um, if you're talking about local areas. So I, I want to spend some more time up in Toke. I want to spend some time up in Glen Allen. I love that part of Alaska in the interior. It's absolutely gorgeous to me. I want to see some of the inlet on the other side. Um, and I would love to go see Dick Prennicke's cabin. Uh, so to me, that would be, uh, that would be a, a, an awesome, awesome trip. I'd like to see the bears um, feeding on salmon over at Brook Falls. I'd like to go on a, on a day trip, fly over there for that. There's a lot of stuff I'd like to do as a tourist here, um, living here. And, and I'll get to do many of them, I'm sure. I talked with a bee guy at the State Ferry. He says the bees are usually replaced every year because it's so hard to overwinter for them. But there's a house in Anchor Point with heated floors. And I saw that where they actually have the, bear, the bees year round down in Anchor Point. They also have a greenhouse down there with heated floors. It's probably the same people um, where they can keep growing stuff all winter long. Henry Leslie, thanks, man. As always, great to have you here. Man, we're already at an hour. This is flown by. This is crazy. I agree. The Cornish cross chickens are just disgusting. <laughs> Three years here, and we have not traveled at all. But you know what? It's crazy, right? So I, I, I spend most of my time here on the property and, and the Kenai Peninsula. I haven't really been off the Kenai Peninsula since I moved here. Um, you know, up to Anchorage a few times, but, you know, and, and maybe Palmer and Wasilla a few times. But other than that, not at all. But I, you're still doing so much on your own place that every day is a new adventure. It's super awesome. Do you know there's a chick in Alaska? I would like to go there. I do know there's a chick in Alaska. And they have a, a music concert, a music oh. festival that I would love to go to. Um, super, super awesome. I agree, right? That, and, and I have stated that myself. This year, that changes. I'm going to spend some more time enjoying my own backyard uh, and, and seeing more of Alaska, by all means. Our issue is chicken and dog sitter. This year we'll travel first. Chickens are pretty, yeah, they'll take care of themselves. You just make sure you got plenty of food and water. And as long as you're not gone for a month, they'll be okay. If you're gone for a week, you can set it up for, to work. But the dog's di a bit different. Suzanne, awesome to see you. Great to have you here today. Matt's been to chicken many, many times. Very cool. All right, folks, we are getting down to the very end of this week's live. I might actually do this again next week. We'll have to see. Um, I don't think I'll go any earlier than noon, but um, <clears throat> it's kind of nice because now I've got the rest of the afternoon, at least six or seven hours before I have to go to bed to get a bunch of stuff done outside. I want to thank you guys, as always, for watching the channel, for the thumbs up, for the constant comments and the encouragement. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful week. Uh, get outside and enjoy the weather if you can. If it's raining and nasty, then just sit back with a cup of tea and look outside the window and enjoy your nice, warm, cozy house. What's up, brother? Holy smokes, it is awesome seeing you. I'm just getting ready to leave, too, man. You're late. You got to be here earlier. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you do on your place this year. I cannot wait to see what you do on your place this year. It's going to be super awesome. As always, guys, thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. I am out of here. I am Sean in Alaska. Thanks, and have a great day.